right, so Dave, you had to do your homework tonight because yeah, you we're know, here at the workbench. And I usually I don't target sheephead. I've caught a few of them. I, the biggest one I ever caught, I was actually targeting them that night. I was hanging under a bridge, and I caught about an eight-and-a-half, nine-pounder on a treble hook with a little shrimp, and that's a great way to catch them. Uh, little tiny treble hooks are a really good way to catch them. But, you know, the sheephead, he's a porgy. He's a member of the porgy family. He's got a lot of teeth in him. He's called a sheephead because he's got... Uh, teeth like a sheep you know if you open yeah. up a sheep's lips they got yeah, these yeah, big yeah. ass teeth well same thing with a sheep head <laughs> they got great big old teeth in there and they can take you know take pieces off you know so don't put your finger in their mouth oh no no because they they, they, they make their living fish. they make their living uh eating crustaceans you know crabs barnacle oysters barnacles and that and those sort of things so like I said before, they've never met a crustacean they didn't like either. So that's, if you can feed them a crustacean, you're probably going to get a bite out of them. So um, they're found all around near hard bottom, you know, anything that barnacles and stuff can grow on, oysters and stuff. Uh, uh, bridges, bridge pilings are a great way to find them, you know, where there's a deep water near an inlet, especially if you've got a deep bridge with some, you know, good water flow through it, and it's growing a lot of stuff on, on the pilings, that's a good place to start to look for them. Now, if you're in a boat, what's really good is you can get up alongside those pilings and you can do some natural chumming. You know, get you a flat, flat edge shovel or a paint scraper and scrape those barnacles off into the water when you're anchored up next to those pilings. And as that stuff falls down, the sheephead come. And, right. you know, then you can drop your crab on them. You know, right. they love a crab, a fiddler crab, or a little blue crab uh, are, is a really great bait. And you can, best way to probably fish those are on a, there's three ways actually. You can fish them on a, just a split shot rig, you know, with a, a little split shot about six or eight inches away from your two aught hook. Right. Or you can use a, like a knocker rig. And this one is when, you know, it's when you got the weight right exactly down on, on the and hook. And you told me some of the fellas use a worm weight. Correct. And you can put a shrimp on there. Or right. a, a crab. And we're gonna hook him in the corner here. Yep, you can hook him in the corner or straight through the middle. You know, through if if you got a really good hook, but otherwise you want to go through the. He's, he, they're hard. Oh, so, I know. Yeah. So what what about the <laughs> treble hook? Go ahead. Well, the treble hook because they have all those teeth and the way they feed. You know, they'll suck in a, a crustacean, crush it all up, and then spit out the shell and keep the good stuff. You know. Right. So you got to be you know really on it to when they get that bite, because a lot of times they'll come and they'll just suck your crab right off the hook before you even know what's going on. And what's really good to, to have is that weight right on the hook. Because right. it, again, when you have the weight on the bait, you can feel everything that happens to that bait a lot better. You're in more contact with the bait. So using those with a, in combination with just a regular two-aught, right. uh, Sometimes you want, if you're starting, if you're starting to get bit off a lot, you might be catching bigger, there might be some bigger fish down there and they're swallowing that two aught short shank all the way down. And then that line's getting to their teeth. If that starts happening to you, if you start breaking off, you know, after the second or third fish, go ahead and start using a long shank hook. A longer shank. Yeah, a shank, uh, you know, just like a, even a regular worm hook two aught, right. you know, with a, a bend in it and a round uh, curve. Even that is a good hook sometimes because when they suck that bait in and that they'll be biting on that hook, that long shade hook instead of the line. And you know, you only want to be using 20 or 30 pound test line, you know, for your leader and then, you know, 15 pound to 20 pound braid, you know, for your, for your main line. So Eagle Claw makes these pre-rigs with mm -hmm. treble hook. Yep. I think these are designed for exactly what we're talking yes, about. Yes, fishing around rock jetties. Exactly, right? especially you know when you when you have a, ch a change of tide, uh, when that's you know started incoming or right when it's going to outgoing, those big weights are really good to keep your bait in a in a pretty good position, and they got the swivels on it to keep everything from twisting all up, which you don't want. That's like, for sure. I like how stealthy that little treble hook oh, is. Oh, the treble, yeah, the treble hook is really great because once that goes in, you know you've got all the way around where you can find the find the, a good place to go in and a, and a sheep head's mouth is a rocky place where your seed can find no purchase it's pretty tough in there all right they catch them on artificials no but you could catch them on fish bites i guess yeah fish bites are great you know especially if when you're pinning a shrimp on there you can put a shrimp on there and then and then lay a fish bites on top of it right uh again if they if they come down and suck that shrimp off 
they're not going to suck that fish bites off. That's so right. it'll still be there. And to use a good uh, shrimp flavor or uh, crab. they come with clam and crab, crab. as well. Yeah. Any, any one of those will work. Dave, I like it when I Dave. ask you to do something and you, you got it. You nailed it. <laughs>